Hello everyone, this is Charles Bridge Tech with another flashlight review, this time from Mioti. Now this here is the FM1. Now I was sent this by a flashlight brand and they wanted me to test and review. This light, this is my very first time doing a light from this particular manufacturer. So let's wait no further. Let's open it up and see what's in. We have one user manual. This is using the Andro UI multi language. You will get one holster. Two O rings. Holster is does have lining, but it's not padded. So just a clip style. This plastic. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the light. And there it is. Right offhand, this is a very nice looking light. I like the way the contours of the body is thinner here, thicker at the ends. Do have a tail clicky there. Clip is pretty heavy duty as well. It's got the copper heat sinking on there. Nice compact design. Any way you want to hold it, everyday carry, even a tactical use if you need. Now this has a flat finish here on it, but it is very smooth. No sharp edges. Now this is my first time ever dealing with this manufacturer, so it is nice to see new lights come my way. Now the style and design on this is very nice. Definitely eye candy for us flashaholics. This is going to regulate the heat very quickly and dissipate it a lot faster than normal. And the machining and finish on this is very nice. So now let's go ahead and take a look here at the special optics. Now as you can see there are auxiliary LEDs in here as well, but there are four Samsung LH351D LEDs and this is 5000K. So it's not too warm, it's not too white. So now let's go ahead and open this up and I'll show you the insides. There's the tail end, spring heavy duty, two of them there. Now my understanding is that this light puts out, with this LED configuration, puts out 4700 lumens which is impressive. Take this all apart here, show you the head of the light. There 
And we're going to go ahead and put this all back together. Alright, so now let me bring out the batteries that I'm going to be using, which are my all time favorite. I have quite a bit of these on hand because they are getting harder and harder to find on this. Here are the LG HG2, known as the chocolate battery, 3000 milliamp. These are 20 amp cells, very powerful. I've had really good luck with these over the years, and I've been using these for many years. So we're going to go ahead and uh, use that. You definitely want to use a high quality unprotected cell that way you can get the best performance of this light and protected cells are going to be too big for it anyways so make sure you get a quality cell so now we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look here as you can see it is alive now you can change those auxiliary LEDs one two three four five six seven and now we've got a little bit brighter that's actually pretty nice. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A little bit dimmer there. Kind of brightening, flashing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now they're off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. kind of going through before and that's what it was on before so nice to be able to have that ability now this being set up the way it is if you want to break the connection here that way it doesn't do that you can do that but when you know a storm is coming in turn that on you can easily find the flashlight in the dark ready to go for any emergency. So now let's go through the UI. UI is pretty straightforward. I'm going to turn on the light there and press down and hold. You can ramp it up or down. Very quick response on that and extremely low light output. So ramping is by default. If you do want to change it to stepping, one, two, three, now you can now go through those light outputs so the stepping is actually very quick so if you do it one time after another you can go from the light that you're on up to the next level so sometimes if you need a little bit brighter light output in a finch you can do so stepping doesn't have the lowest light output that this does so we're going to go ahead and one two three now we're on the ramping now it goes down to the real low light output on that so from off you can do it three times one two three and this is a battery check four four point one four point one volts on that battery I just charged it and it'll keep doing that until you're done. Now click that button. Now we're going to do four clicks. One, two, three, four. Now the light is locked out digitally. Still not a huge fan of this, but in any case, the light will only come on on the lowest level. But as you can see, the auxiliary LEDs still work. So it's still going to drain the battery. So definitely want to manually lock that light out one two three four now the light is unlocked and we're back in business so now let me show you the beam here before I forget beam is more of a flood it does have a little bit of area of concentration there further out you get it's going to be gone up close tapering spill with this type of TIR optics is normal and typical. And now we're going to go back down. And now we're going to do five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. And now we have 
the pressure switch mode. Now once you want to get out of that and you want to set it up to the light output that you want to do, you can do so easily. Okay, so now that we had it on this light level and you want to pressure switch it but it to be on a brighter level you can do so by setting up the light beforehand so about right there is going to be good turn it off one two three four five so now when you turn on the light it pressure switches that light level a little bit brighter and you can choose whichever light output that you want it's up to you again simply getting out of it you're going to untwist it break the connection and now we're back in business we can raise it up if you want so now we're going to do six clicks one two three four five six now you have what they call a muggle mode so it kind of has that two step on and off kind of slowly brightens up put it here so you kind of see that two step up, two step down. Now we're going to turn it off. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now it turns on like normal. So now we're going to do the special modes, which is my favorite. So we're going to go ahead and triple click this, but on the third click, you're going to press down and hold. We're going to do that now. And with that activation, as you can see, we're in candlelight mode. Now this one here, you can adjust the intensity if you wish, just by pressing down and holding. And get it real soft. Got that candlelight flickering there. really a nice feature on these lights now when you want to go to the next one you're simply going to double click and now you have bike mode you can intensify this as well but doing so messes up the camera right at this level is good double click again will get you a party mode now you can intensify that as well And my camera picks it up about right here. Double click again. We'll get you tactical strobe. Which is extremely distracting. And my favorite of all strobe options. Double click again. We'll now give you what they call a lightning storm mode. And uh, I've used this many times. There's no adjustments you can do on this particular mode. But put a diffuser on that, make one, and uh, put it in the window behind the blinds. Someone will swear that there's a lightning storm activity going out there and you don't have the sound. One of my favorites. And then you can clip that one time and you're right back to the normal UI. And that's all that I'm going to show on this. You can fully program this light to your preference, to your desire, whatever you want to do. You can change a lot of features on this, a lot more than I have time to do so on film. But in any case, you can factory reset this light. Just press and hold that button, screw it down tight, keep holding it, and it will give you a confirmation blink, and you're reset. So now this here feels very solid and rugged. It's got a lot of weight to it with the battery. This is a very nice looking light. So let's wait no further. Let's take it outside. See how it does in the wilderness. We are out here in the darkness with the Miyoti FM1. Let's go ahead and get started. Now believe it or not, the light is on very low light level here 
walk over here a little more kind of see there so if you're wanting a super low light output moonlight firefly whatever you want to call it this has it we're going to ramp it up here just a little bit kind of see very nice 5000k this is my preferred uh, Kelvin even on my vehicle uh, it kind of changes from the the headlights there had the 40 4300 and it went to the 5k and it's just perfect uh, 6000k is okay it's just a little bit uh, a little bit less performance during weather like rain and stuff but the 5k is perfect so you see there you know, all the different colors in the grass and the leaves freezing cold out here <laughs> It is really cold. 21 degrees, I think is what I looked at. We're gonna ramp it up here a little bit more. Water spout, 38 feet. 65 feet there to that tree. There's the beam there on the fence, real floaty. Kind of pan around here. Now this is not going to have a lot of range, but uh, I do list a link below all my videos so you can see my distances in my testing area here, right here behind my house. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next level here, I'll go up a little more, nice, nice light output, very nice wide beam. insane we're gonna go ahead and double click it for turbo here I believe there we go amazing all coming from this little light pan around it will step down due to heat but hopefully it won't do so with it being so cold out here, so quickly that is. Just a lot of light. <laughs> we'll do a beam profile here behind my hand. All the way around to the ground below. Back up to my hand. Yeah. Very nice performance on this. My very first review of their product. <laughs> very nice. Impressive. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed those night shots. Definitely a very nice flood beam performance. A lot of lumens out there for any type of light, especially flood. Show you here with it in the holster and that does fit perfectly. That is a perfect fit for this light and it looks good too. Good protection for the head. Nice. Solid build quality, nice features of course, the Android UI is very popular, it's grown on me as well. This thing here is easy to carry, everyday carry or tactical if you wish. Now remember, the beam on this is a very nice floody beam, so it's not going to have a huge amount of throw, but it does very good for this size and form factor. Also, this being my very first review of this type of light from this manufacturer, is always nice to get new lights from different companies battling for that flashlight war going on out there. Now, this here is also budget friendly, in my opinion. All right, well, I want to thank Flashlight Brand for sending me this Mioti FM1.
to review. Now, if this is something you're interested in getting, remember, use a quality cell unprotected in this for the best performance. If this is something you're interested in getting, I will leave a link down in the description, including my special discount code. That's going to help you save some money on this light, just in case you're interested in getting it. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thanks button, donate to my channel if you wish, or you can please share, like, and subscribe. That way I can bring more of these new lights to you in the future. Thanks for watching. Take care.